today on lulls we got a bunch of scandals that's what we do around here we have the otani news that recently broke we'll try to get to the bottom of what's going on there with his interpreter and a missing five million dollars we also had an interesting report from arif hassan about the draft network that is going viral on nfl twitter a lot of seedy stuff going on around there and of course brian has some wild kate middleton conspiracies he wants to get into it's lulls with Pete and Brick. Let's go. I, does he think? I think he thinks go. this. He thinks this is a go. Vegas Dave thinks this is a go. Hot naked girls doing yoga. What? Why don't you just win like a man? Random.org. <laughs> Type in one for yes, two for no. And let the DFS guys pick for you. And I'm absolutely begging you not to do bus. <laughs> Please don't do bus. Right, Brian. I mean, AJ wants to get right down to brass tacks. Are you the person who photoshopped the Kate Middleton photo? It's clearly MI6. <laughs> um, have you have you followed that uh, at all? I, I don't know what like where this came from from you, but believe it or not, I have. Okay. <laughs> we, no, we just. Well, I, you know, it's our beat around here to cover scandals in the sports and fantasy space. Like if we were really trying to get views and grow, we would just be uh, a very closely covering the Kate Middleton because this is the number one conspiracy in the world right now. Yeah, I was going to I was going to I had like a joke tweet about it the other day. And I'm like, I don't think enough people are paying attention to the Kate Middleton drama <laughs> to make this tweet. <laughs> My thing was like, it is obviously so shady, the the comms and also the photo and the stuff, but the whole, the most recent one where they were spotted coming out from the market, like, would they be so brazen to do a double, a body double, like in that context, wouldn't they want to keep like shadow moving her around from the hospital home and not show her in public? They're like, we'll just let her waltz out there. That seems a little too ridiculous. I don't get it at all. Like, why not just... I, I understand like you don't want to like encourage like this behavior, but then there's also comes a point where you're just like, just waltz her out <laughs> for a five minute interview. Yeah. Wait, why can't I, I'm blinking. Who was it? Oh, it was like the DeMar Hamlin stuff where they were like, you got to put them up there and just wave because there were so many people that was like right. DeMar Hamlin died on the field. And this is a body double back here. It's like, sometimes you just got to throw the people some red meat and, uh, and Waltz are out there for an interview. Right. Right. Yeah. Even the NFL gets it, you know, which if they're, if they're figuring it out, you know, the, the, the British, uh, government should be able to pull it off. A Ashton has the uh, has the bet for sure. It's it's if you know. I thought I thought Kate Middleton disappearing was bad. How about my NBA lineups with Chris Middleton last night? Oh, there we go. I didn't even catch that. Uh, I missed the Chris as I was reading that comment too quickly. It's funny, man. Like. I I watched like one Kate Middleton video on TikTok and now the algorithm, like whenever I log on there, will just give me exclusively, you know, Kate Middleton conspiracies. The, the new one is someone is like, you know, she had apparently, you know, pretty serious abdominal surgery when she was in the hospital, I guess is what they're saying. And then this person is like, but that video where she's exiting the, the farmer's market or whatever, she's holding a bag. And they're like, you would never have someone that just had abdominal surgery holding a bag like that, that could be putting extra stress on her abdomen, which proves that it's not actually Kate Middleton right there. <laughs> I saw a, a zoomed in photo of, of that that person. It did not look like Kate Middleton to me. Well, okay. I can't believe I'm going to have to be the one that, like tried to tamper down the flames of conspiracy here. But wasn't she in the hospital and pretty sick? Like, isn't there a chance she was malnourished, lost a lot of weight, doesn't look like she did before? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But... <laughs> That ain't Kate, Kate Middleton. Let me see if I can find the photo <laughs> I saw. Yeah, I, I'm sure I can find it. I'll, I'll pull it up here for our uh, for our video watchers here. Um, yeah, I just found one on Twitter. Uh, for compliments of Piers Morgan here. Let me see. One sec. This one? Yeah, there's a zoomed in one too, but yeah. Right there, that's definitely not her. <laughs> you, you really think like why would you even attempt this why would you or you're saying this is how they're trying to say like look we're good now this is kate uh i think that's what the people are claiming they're trying to do yeah, yeah. 
I also like that you're such an, an expert on who Kate Middleton is that you're like, oh, this is not Kate Middleton. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I, I am. Um it's it's also uh, bizarre too because you know she was in the hospital for a while and the uh the video I watched somewhere said that uh William only visited her once in the hospital, which I guess would like check out if they're on the verge of a divorce. There's all the rumors about him having his mistress and all of that stuff. But it seems weird if it's like, hey, your ailing wife, you're not going to go visit her at all. But now you guys are just doing a stroll to the farmer's market. Like that seems like things are going pretty good if you guys are doing a date to the farmer's market. You didn't want to just send someone out there to go pick up your your dairy products for you? Yeah, yeah, I agree. It It's also like it's not – you know, 1965 anymore where like, who, who cares if they're getting divorced? Who cares? Right. Like they're, they're, uh, you know, like Harry already left the country, you know what I mean? Like, and they yeah. disassociated with them. No one cares. And you know, like, I don't know, like that's what they were like. That's, I think they're trying to claim like that type of thing, but like, I don't think anyone cares anymore. And they that, they don't, but that's like the whole royal family's entire thing is like continuing that this like decorum and their like version of a class system and this monarchy like all matters and is still real and can exist in this version of society. And everyone else is like, we don't give a shit. Like you're just tabloid yeah. father. But they're like, no, we still do things in this very proper way. Right, right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like we cannot let the public know that yeah. the princess is, is hurt. You know, or but, what? Who knows what they what they're doing? I don't know why they don't like. At this point, it's been long enough where they should they should pull Hamlin, and and just let her go go out and wave for long enough where the, it's like, oh, okay, that's her. I think they should have when they had the initial um, Photoshop scandal of the photo with Kate and the kids. They should have just come out like the royal family and said, "Hey, look, one of our social media interns got a hold of one of these new AI." generating photo softwares was having a ton of fun and uh he accidentally uploaded uh one of his private files instead of the actual photo like that would have been a very easy out of like hey man we've just been experimenting with some of this new ai software i mean how easy is it nowadays too to do that just like yeah. first you, you put your that you just laid out a perfect per, you see you should be hired by mi6 pete like do the ai first and if you get caught say somebody else did it yeah. And it was a, you know, but if it passes as, as real AI, you know, as real and not AI, you got away with it. Like they're going to be, there's going to be so much in the next year and a half, two years, so much AI stuff going on. They, the way they're handling it is so uh, like painfully obvious that something weird is going on or it's like they're, they're doing like the PR equivalent of like a kid who's like reading a Playboy magazine and their mom comes in and he starts like flailing around the room and is like trying to pick up the mattress and stuffing it under there. And some of the pages are still showing and It's like, <laughs> dude, you could just play it cool and say like, mom, kid gave me this to at school. And I don't think it's very good. What do you think <laughs> we should do with this? And then you're like, good. But they're like, no, I got to make a big deal out of it. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. I mean, the thing to do is just own it. I, yeah, I, you know, it. you just yeah. own that shit, but they're, they're, they're dropping the ball on this one. I don't know. I don't know what's happening to poor Kate, but uh Yeah. I I think you guys should get used to this. Um once the the edge fully dries up in DFS and is... you know all the money goes away, Brian and I are gonna be forced to just become a full on like page six gossip rat. Yeah. A, a monarchy gossip uh you know. <laughs> Yeah. I mean it's nice though too because it gives us you know, this is the, pro you know, how many things, I guess your mom watches Lulz, but the number of things that we cover on Lulz that I'd be able to discuss with my mom, it, there's not much in that Venn diagram, but a little Kate Middleton, now we got something to work with. That's, I mean, I posted our female listenership on Twitter there. Did you? Uh, yes. And I was shocked it was that high. And I'm not sure any fantasy show has broken the 5% barrier, the glass Please ceiling. Yes. Okay, you're right because if I go in my YouTube analytics, I'm I'm sub one percent um, for my stuff, and we ha we have five percent here on via our podcast app. So yeah. does that? But that would probably I guess I would have to get granular with all our Lowell's YouTube data. But it would be interesting if uh, the majority of our female uh, consumers listened via audio form that they preferred audio relative 
to the Met. If it look, it appears that way. Yeah. yeah. And if, and, and again, I think that is a record for all of gambling in sports and fantasy uh, podcast history. No one's ever broken the 5% barrier. I think we should put that out as a challenge. Can you beat this? Can you beat uh, our 5% here? Post it uh, on Twitter. Let us know. Um, because until you do, we are the most uh, gender inclusive and um, I don't know, just most welcoming show within the entire industry. I think right. that's what happens when you fight toxicity for as long as we have. Yeah, it becomes more welcoming to the uh, to the other gender. Um, what would you think Levitans is like one percent? <laughs> Do you think he gets? It has to be really low, but I wonder like if he's over the years picked up some steam where it's like, you know, I like I've I'm sure at some point I've told Lauren about like a ridiculous question he got asked on the solo pod. And I I do know for a, a 100 percent guarantee that Lauren has never downloaded it to like listen herself. But I wonder if there's been enough crossover of women being like, hey, I'm going to go check this out. He also did the episode with Ashley Jennings, Peter Jennings' wife, and I know that might have garnered some interest. Maybe some wives and girlfriends would have wanted to tune into that. So maybe just a little bit there. Mm, that's true. Yeah, I think that raises him up from like 0.5 to 1% probably. Yeah. Um, I just asked Davis. I DM Davis to see what, what his is. Uh, the Tate cast? Man. Um, yeah. It's got to it, be. It's dramatic. It's be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, Davis said he got uh, some, some guys. I told this story on uh, Best Ball Breakfast. A guy came up to me. We were we took April to a park on uh, on Sunday and a guy came up to me and referenced the cash game bit. A guy I'd never seen in my life came up and said hi to me. I uh, was familiar with the cash game king. Davis said he got recognized the other day uh, at the gym. And um, I'll tell you what, barely get recognized. And when I do, it's never been by a female. Uh, that's, uh, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's some strong evidence right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I I imagine, I imagine. Uh, so the other big international scandal going on that just recently broke or is still kind of currently unfolding is this Otani stuff with his interpreter brian do you i can pull up the article here so we can kind of try to piece this together but uh as you understand it what are the the very high level cliff notes here his interpreter was uh rated by the fbi for uh some sort of gambling with a bookmaker not you know not a legal book and um through that that process one of the checks that was paid to the bookmaker, 500000 was Otani's name was on it. And so uh, the 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 uh, interpreter was fired, and he was saying that uh, it's all 100% him who racked up $4.5 million or something in debt to a bookmaker, and he didn't understand that that was illegal, which, whatever, fine, fair enough. You know, he's, he's not from America. Uh, I think. Um, right. Yeah. So uh, the, uh, the obvious, the obvious question that seems to be uh, around the internet is how did some interpreter who's probably making 150 K a year, maybe rack up 4.5 million in sports betting debts. And did Otani pay off all of it? Um, well, I, I'm not I can, sure. I think I, I saw in one article he did, but maybe maybe I misread that. Yeah, uh, it is. I, I, first of all, uh, I don't want to get bogged down. I would take the over on that salary. I, I bet Otani. It sounds like these guys are really close. Uh, I bet Otani's taking pretty good care of him. He is. He it says he was employed by the Angels, though. Okay. So I'm assuming that means they pay his salary, but it might be over 150. I'm not disputing that. Yeah, I would, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's interesting that I guess I would have, do you think then the angels were the one who um, brought him to Otani and said, Hey, we have this guy, we've hired him to be your interpreter. Or is this a guy that Otani brought over on his own? Otani brought over on his own, yeah. but he was still paid by the yeah. angels. No yeah. boat access three. He was paid 300, 400 K. I could believe that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 300, 400 K. Um, still not enough to rack no. up five million in gambling debts. Yeah, he's got to live <laughs> in LA and travel 
a hundred and you know, 200 days a year. Brian, that's like 300 K a year. That's like two trips to whole foods. I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> um, so uh, let's see here. So the timeline in this article, uh, this two days ago, you know, ESPN gets wind of this. Uh, a spokesman tells ESPN that Otani transferred the funds to cover Mizuhara's gambling debt. You know, then, as one does, Pete. Yeah, I mean, got to look out for your bros, uh, especially ones who have been translating for you. Uh, he does a 90-minute interview in which he lays out the supposed story. A 90-minute interview is wild. Obviously, Otani wasn't happy about it and said he would help me out to make sure I never do this again. He decided to pay it off for me. I want everyone to know Otani had zero involvement in betting. I want people to know i did not know this was illegal i learned my lesson the hard way i will never do sports betting ever again god that seems like the lady doth protest a little too much I, and also that i wouldn't call it the hard way i would call that like the pretty easy way like somebody yeah. paid your debt for you and all you got was fired the hard way would be prison time but ask tom Dwan the hard way buddy <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah right yeah publicly shamed um yeah, I I don't know what it, what is what does chat feel like? Is that does anyone buy this guy's story? Yeah, let it let us uh, know what you think. I'll read some of this other blow by blow events that happened. Uh, all of this was yesterday. Um, Otani helps the Dodgers win. Uh, an ESPN reporter asked Otani Camp about Missouri's allegation that he was present and helped move the funds and that he was going to be paid back. Otani's spokesman con contacts Otani's attorney, then disavows that account. I would have also assumed that like Otani's running a pretty tight ship with his attorney, with his spokesman, with his PR people, that they would all be like providing a united front. It feels interesting that they're like siloed in a way that the spokesman and the attorney aren't collaborating on this. Mm. Yeah. Um, oh, I didn't know that he's he's saying he didn't uh, – He it's massive theft now? I didn't see that. Yeah, so Otani's attorneys at Burke Brettler LLP uh, – congrats mm -hmm. on the exposure here. In the course of responding to recent media inquiries, we discovered that Shohei has been the victim of a massive theft, and we are turning the matter over to authorities. So they're now pivoting course of saying like, hey – the translator was like, no, it's all good. Otani, I got into some trouble, and Otani's like, hey, get out of jail free card. I'll pay your debts. And now the attorneys are coming back and saying, no, 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 this, this money was stolen from Otani. Then this interpreter agrees to another interview with ESPN, but says he was told he could not comment when asked if he has been accused of theft, which uh, I don't think they want to talk to you if you're not going to talk about that. He declines to say who told him that. He then recants his entire story, claiming that Otani had no knowledge of his gambling activities or debts, and that Otani did not make the wire transfers. Wow. That, I, how did I know? I didn't see that, that last part. <laughs> and then this part. And then he's fired. Well, yeah. It, yeah. Absolutely wild. Huh. I wonder if they're like, he got in, you know, with his lawyers and they're like, you know what you, if this guy's going to say whatever you want, tell him he stole it from you. Right. Yeah. It just seems to me again, with what a major international athlete Otani is that they would not have had a better war room to discuss how this was going to go down with the interpreter. You have the lawyers in there. This is the plan. This is how we are going to mitigate this scandal. And it seems like everyone was just fucking firing from the hip. And this translator's like, hey, ESPN, get me on first take. I'm ready to talk to Skip Bayless about this right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not thinking ESPN is like, you know, some cross-examiner anyways. I think they're all basically in cahoots to they want MLB to succeed. And, you know, Otani, the better Otani the MLB does, the better ESPN does. So yeah. I don't think they were, they really, they were probably just like, wow, this idiot's just telling us all this stuff. I gotta, I gotta like, you know, press play and, and here's what he said. Yeah. Actually. And they, they, they pretty much did Pete, right? Like the articles I was all reading before this, he, he changed course. They, they didn't really dig into Otani at all. They were just like, here's what the guy said. He said he did it. Otani wrote one check for him to pay off his debt. He's never going to do it again. They didn't go into any speculation like they would if like it was someone they hated. You know what I mean? Like Lance yeah. Armstrong or something. They would have went down. Well, it, it, 
it's it's fascinating too because you think about how uh, this interpreter and obviously that this is unique to an international star who who doesn't speak english right like if you were trying to think of the ultimate fall guy for something like this like if uh it's some other you know mike trout i mean like who's mike trout's fall guy if he's the one that is trying to illegally gamble on sports and then needs a really good scapegoat it's just like it's almost too perfect to have someone like this that you are like intimately familiar with because they are your vehicle for communication. It's just, it seems too convenient that it just so happened to be your interpreter had a gambling problem. Yes. Yes. It's, I don't know. I'm not buying it. Uh, no Bosock says definitely feels like this guy was just a bridge for Otani to make the bets without anyone knowing though. The direct payments seem really dumb. If that's the case, Otani's camp completely changed the story after the 90 minute ESPN interview that's that's the really fishy stuff that they immediate immediately pivoted course it, it had to be it had to be that he made that direct payment and they're like we gotta we gotta do something here yeah Man. the problem is now this guy his interpreter goes from just being fired to now wire fraud and a long, a long jail sentence yeah it's dude, it's it's kind of, I mean, not it's not a perfect comp, obviously, but it's kind of like the Mickelson Billy Walters stuff, right? Where Billy Walters, because Otani like can't clear his name because the ramifications for him getting busted are far bigger, that like some head is gonna have to roll, some guy's gonna have to fall on the sword. <laughs> in that case, it was Billy Walters. In this case, it's gonna be the interpreter. Otani turns in uh, Bob Volgaris to get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> man what do you what do you think uh if we do did 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 anyone have details on the exact kind of wagers do we know what sports do we know what kind of bets were being made uh as part of this debt yeah i didn't see anything anyone in chat um because obviously the big the big boy would be baseball um, yes of course. especially because because even if this even if this guy's story is true either one of them he was employed by you know the angels and uh so that would be a big a big no no yeah this is uh soccer is otani a big soccer fan i saw him at the uh he he attended a los angeles rams game uh, i believe he was hanging out with puka nakua you have a little sweat on the game when you're going you can't blame otani for that you gotta get a little sweat there if you're going live uh, that should be if he's going live he should be allowed to you know yeah the uh we got sacrilegious. We need uh, Derek, of course, the NFFC guy, Otani, and Parlay Picker, who I actually haven't gotten a chance to read that uh, article yet, but sacrilegious says we need them all in a high-stakes three-man. Did you see the – apparently he did a big interview with The Athletic. Did you see that? I I don't have a subscription, so I only read like the, the beginning a little bit. I'll just pull up the title because I was just laughing because we're in a meta right now for these – uh scammers uh where you just blame the demon that's kind of how you get out of this this title of this story feeding the demon inside ex-employee tells how and why he stole 22 million from the jags and now i just kind of want to control f demon but there's a mental demon inside just twice there, just twice they're battling a secret addiction that no one knew about um the demon so that I'm filing that away, Brian. If I ever get in trouble, um, I am blaming the demon inside. Pete, me. I would hire an interpreter tonight. Uh, you get, just double your outs. You know, the demon inter interpreter. You'll you can pretty much get get away with anything. That's you, actually right because you create a buffer. You say not only is this not my demon, it's my interpreter's demon. That right. did it. now you're two steps removed. Yeah, don't you want to help? Yeah. This this person with this horrible demon inside him. Um, the other angle here is in both of these is similar. Is they got lo lawyers chirping in their ears, going, "Listen, uh, what's his name Patel or something? Yeah, Patel. Yeah. Um, if you say you're fucked, you're going to jail. But if we play the you're a complete addict in sports betting is you know, this horrible thing that controlled you, we might be able to cut your prison time by X. 
Yeah. And he's like, there's nothing. I guarantee. I, well, I have no idea. This is all speculation, but I guarantee that that conversation is exactly what happened. Now, if, if I was on the, uh, the uh, prosecuting lawyer side, I'd be like, okay, if you had a demon, then why are you buying houses and cars and golf trips and et cetera, right. et cetera, et cetera. Cause that money, your demon won't want to spend that money on gambling. Yeah, and I, I hadn't read this yet, but I'm just kind of like skimming through it right now. And he is like uh, clearly uh, advised by his lawyer to play up the gambling addiction. They just give you this illusion that you're winning because they're just making so much money off of you that they need to keep you happy and keep you gambling. Not everyone will get it, get addicted to gambling, but everyone can get addicted. I mean, it, it could be true, obviously, for him, but it's also a very... Um, it's the easy layup from a defense angle. I think uh, the defense to reduce the sentence. He's not getting, yeah. he's not getting clear. And I bet it works a little bit. They'll do. If you go to these uh, gambling, uh, uh, you know, gamble anonymous courses in prison for a year, will reduce two years of your sentence, you know, shit like that. Um, so that, that, I think that's his, his only out. And you know, I guess it's possible he's also addicted to to gambling too. But I don't know. And he blames you know they they try to keep you winning. It's like DraftKings was the one that turned him in, right? <laughs> so yeah, yeah, sure. Maybe they're trying to keep you winning, I guess. But like they're also the ones who stopped letting you deposit and con probably contact the Jaguars and go, hey, your employees donating money here. Maybe you want to look into this. It this is this is a pretty uh, reasonable payment plan after uh, stealing twenty dollars. It says he's going to continue treatment while incarcerated. He's set to begin his sentence in ninety days. When he gets out, he'll be put on a payment plan two hundred and fifty dollars a month directed to the Jaguars. Do you think that should be like almost instead of a flat number? Shouldn't it be proportional to however much money he's making? I don't you think that's got to be in there somewhere like. Like, so, like if he he's ever sort of somehow, selling houses, like a real estate, and he's making a hundred thousand, 200,000 a year. And he's only having to pay 250 back a month. He, he, right. Exactly. Or, well, like it's kind of like if he, if he sells his book and it becomes a big movie and he gets 20 million in real royalties right. or something like that's got to go back to the Jaguars. <laughs> you know, that's what happened with the Wolf of Wall Street guy. So I imagine the same thing would probably happen here. Yeah. Man. I, and I just imagine who's 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 receiving that check on the on the Jags. He's just he's like, we got our two hundred fifty. That's two fifty. <laughs> two fifty, everyone. Gee, you're you're totally right. Like this is this is absolutely something that Netflix would make one of those documentaries about. That should be like a seventy minute documentary that they turn into a four episode miniseries on. I can already see it. Yeah, it's. It's possible. It's it needs a little more juice, but um, you know you never know. I doubt you know it's going to blow up to like Wolf of Wall Street money, where the Jags would actually realis realistically get their money back. Um, <laughs> this there's some other you know because everyone all the quotes too from the people in the DFS scene were about how bad he was. You know in that that initial ESPN article, I think it was Seminole who said that. And everyone was like you know, licking their chops whenever they were. I love this line here. He bristled at the suggestion that he was a neophyte and historically bad gambler, as one report suggested. How, man, that is so reflective of like the human experience. Like you were going down, you were caught red-handed and you still try to save a little face of like, I wasn't an idiot gambler. I wasn't punting it off in those three mans. I was using good projections. Like the hubris to still want to get that takeoff when that's the least important thing going on here is wild. Man, so he's so he's like, I'm addicted, but I'm still sharp. <laughs> exactly. All right. Like, it wouldn't the defense be like, no, dude, just say you were like donking it off. The demon made you do it. There was no thought going into it. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, no, man, I, I had the good stuff, man. I was running my own sips. <laughs> Listen, you don't you don't understand like the in, the, the variants, the injuries and variants and everything I that I went through. And the de don't forget the demon. Yeah, reduce my sentence, but I got I got screwed. Uh
You know, if you were the Jaguars or just like a K, you know, anything like this, this one's a little egregious because of the the amount of money. But if it was something more like five hundred thousand, like wouldn't yeah. you like just say, "Don't send this guy to jail." Just put him on an ankle monitor and get a real job. I'm sure he's educated and can get a real job. And give yeah. me half his salary for the next five years, ten years, and give me my money back. Right. Is it like, doesn't that make way more sense? This is so much money. Like, it just feels like prison time for this guy is like super cruel and unusual. I know he did a really bad thing, but like, I mean, it's just, I mean, the money so much, like, like paying 250 bucks back a month is like, it's hilarious. Like, how is that? How is it not 25% of your, your monthly income? Uh, right. It's just, if it wasn't such a high number, he just went insane. If it was, you know, 300, 400, 500,000, like, just have the guy go get an accounting job somewhere. Yeah. And just pay off his debt. And then, and then if he, and then if he continues to do stuff like this, yeah, lock him up. But or, like, uh, get know. hired. You know how, um, you know, companies and software companies will, will hire hackers, you know, to help spot and shore up their vulnerabilities. It's like NFL franchises bring this guy around and be like, if you were trying to sneak 20 million out of our credit card system, how would you do it? Can you help us tighten it up? He could be a <laughs> consultant to other NFL teams. Is that the catch me if you can plot? I think so. <laughs> uh, it, it is. This guy does seem like a hilarious individual. On top of that, he was bothered by news accounts that only one person attended his plea hearing. He told friends and family not to attend. He said, this is like Donald Trump. Like Donald Trump would be, you know, yeah. getting the electric chair and he'd be like, they said there was only 40 people. There was hundreds watching me get electrocuted. I probably, like, who cares? I'll take that? the most amps. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I had the most people defending me. No, no, no. I told them not to come. It's like, well, the news account was that only one person attended. You saying that you told people not to attend corroborates that thing that there weren't that many people there. <laughs> what, what are you trying to say? I, I love that they put bristled and then bothered. Like he's clearly stewing, you know, he's like, yeah. he, this guy's going to jail for a long time. He's fucked forever. And but he's like, no, no, listen, I was sharp. First of all, yeah. let's get that right. And I have tons of friends. Okay. They, <laughs> I told him not to come. Yeah. yeah. Patel bristled that he had to pay 250 a month. He was trying to push for only 225. Uh, <laughs> yeah, upon right, right. Oh man. Um, yeah. Well, this is uh good for him getting his, his full profile uh, here in the athletic. Uh, what a, what a wild ride for, uh, for Mr. Patel. Um, the other thing, I know you didn't get a chance to read it, but have you seen what was going on with uh, this draft network uh, story that uh, Arif Hassan published the other day? I did. I, I looked into it a bit. Yeah, it's. Uh, were you familiar? Had you ever heard of the draft network before this story? I I, I want to say I did, but I just like can't ever remember using that site. Yeah. I, I I mean I remember around the draft obviously I've seen their stuff pop up um and some of their clips go uh go social or viral um but yeah I hadn't he seen uh, or heard about them recently but uh Arif is a a fabulous writer and a terrific reporter even his uh hook here is incredible what happened to the draft network over the past 3 months I talked to a dozen current and former employees and vendors poured over court docs and combed through archives learned about Brazilian tech firms 1 million in unpaid dues in something called the porn house uh here and there was another, uh, this was the hook that got me. This was a quote from someone. Have you ever seen the Hulu series, The Dropout, Elizabeth Holmes, Theranos? She's running a Fugazi company. That is what I compare uh, Paige Dimakos to, who is running the Draft Network. I think she's genuinely a crook. And a lot of the most unfavorable quotes all have to do with this Paige character. That I that I did read, yeah. So the Theranos woman, she had that... Uh, device that was i think for like diabetes or some blood test that like barely yes. pricked the skin and uh got a whole bunch of vcs to invest in this like completely fraudulent um she was like a yeah. legit 
like psychopath and she filled the void of, you know, everyone wants to deify these entrepreneurs and tech guys. And she was the big female one. And she even did this thing where she like modulated her voice. So it sounded deeper as an affect that she was intentional about. And her old friends are like, you don't even sound like this. Like, what, what are you doing? Um, but she was literally like the epitome of fake it till you make it. Um, she just, uh, exuded confidence and was able to sell investors over and over again. I had never heard of this uh, lady, Paige uh, Dimikos. Had you? No, 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 no. I love the. It's very similar to that uh, Theranos woman because she would wear the Steve Jobs outfits. This girl's kind of got you know Heard like oh, I'm a sporty you know I'm a sporty fantasy girl you know. Yeah. See, Brian, this is us again uh, servicing our five percent. Uh, female audio listener. That's why we're so Davis. Davis did DM me says less than 1%. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, I could just pull a few of these, uh, these other quotes. There's lots of stuff from former employees. The tendency to silo and gaslight had been noted by other former employees that spoke to wide left. One employee explained that she had been asked by Demikos to flirt with quarterback prospects to secure exclusive interviews. She refused. In spite of her refusal, other employees explained that Demikos had privately disparaged that employee for flirting with players. Um, and then... This was a funny one here. Employees had begun picking up on Dimikos' tendency to overpromise and underdeliver. In some instances, she would oversell her connections around the league. During the 2021 draft, she confidently told employees that the Bengals had already locked in Penny Sewell. Spoiler alert, they did not take him over Jamar Chase, who, spoiler alert, they did take uh, there. Let's see. I don't even know who that Penny Sewell is. Well, there was a huge debate heading into that draft because they're like, do you get Jamar? Do you get Jamar Chase, generational wide receiver, a weapon, or do you get someone to protect Joe Burrow because he was coming off a season, lots of sacks, and they're like, "Hey, this is our franchise guy. Got to keep him upright." And everyone's like, "Just protect this man. Get Penny Sewell at all costs." And they, of course, uh, went with the wide receiver. This was one of the more wild quotes in here too. Uh, there was even a moment of alarm when Willis expressed he had to go to the bathroom. We were like, we'll walk you there, said one employee. We were afraid he would open the wrong door and find all of these sex toys what? in the draft house. What the hell is going on at this place? Well, it's it's funny too because one um, – so way – I actually want to hear – I don't know if Josh Norris has tweeted about this, but I, do you, I don't know if you – uh, remember when Josh Norris had his like the best all time mock draft of it was like two or three years ago. He set like the record for most accurate picks, but he was doing some radio hits at the draft house uh, with the draft network. Um, and they basically had like this kind of like bar vibe and all these cameras and they were like live streaming during the NFL draft and had all of their analysts and stuff there, but it like looked like a cool space. It was like a, a studio slash like U shaped bar element and so clearly there were were other things going on uh at this spot uh beyond just draft analysis hmm. uh yeah and pure so that's I, don't, I mean i imagine this company's ratio would be similar to our listener ratio yes yes um doesn't sound that fun. another one uh, it's unclear what happened to the office chairs after the trip, given how difficult they are to move across large distances. It could be the case that there is now an adult film studio with a fully functioning conference room. Um, so that's one way to repurpose your draft studio space in the off season when there's not as many prospects to talk about. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you gotta, you gotta save money whenever you can. Uh, so there you go, Brian. I, I think, uh, the other things people were joking about, um, the, the opening sentence here from 2011 to 2014, a loose network of young draft enthusiasts known as draft Twitter emerged from the online football space. And someone's like, this is how, you know, it is going to, uh, end very poorly, uh, a loose network of young draft enthusiasts, uh, from draft Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing good has ever happened with yeah. a loose network of young draft enthusiasts. Well, it's like, it's, it's like, would that be, everyone talks about the, uh, you know, Pat Mayo's, <laughs> I mean, Pat Mayo's idea that I clipped as a short where he's like, I will have a bunch of DFS pros train these hot babes or whatever. Yeah. It's like, let's, we, we need to steer away from any kind of frat like behavior where you take these Neanderthals online and then allow them to have, um, 
essentially a frat house IRL to to do whatever they want. Uh, you, you you think? I think he he's he's hoping that drama occurs from that sort of uh, dynamic, Pete. That's his that's his million dollar idea is to eventually. Uh, be uh, frisked in an expose by Arif Hassan, uh, about 5,000 words about how it all went wrong for Pat <laughs> Mayo's DFS babe. Oh, God. Pat, and then Pat has to blame it on his gambling addiction. <sighs> oh, man. No, he uh, would it be Cust? Would, would Cust be the fall guy? Yeah, that's his interpreter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Feel free to use this, Pat. Feel free to use this. Um, He'll be fine. He'll be fine. He will. Uh, Brian, is your bracket busted yet? Yeah, this is the first year in a long time I didn't fill out one bracket. Wow! Did you fill any out? I did. Um, I we ran one in the Deposit Kingdom, kicked in uh, some uh, awards, uh, run the Sims or prizes, I should say. Run the Sims is going to give out some free subs to some of the winners. Uh, but yeah, someone was asking about our LOL show, and I was thinking about it because we did it a few years ago, but that was back when we were recording on Wednesdays. So that was before the NFL or the tournament kicked off on Thursday, whereas this year it had already kicked off. So us doing, you know, a game theory bracket show mm. uh, wouldn't have made much sense. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, I don't know why none just popped up where I, the, that I wanted to do. Uh, I should have done one. It it is like, I mean, it is. I thought the show we did a couple of years ago, and I know more and more of this analysis is out there now, but it is fun, right? Where it's like you can essentially um in the same way when you're looking at a dfs play projection versus ownership projection and then building through there and it's like which which teams are over owned based on the espn public available pick data relative to their actual whatever ken palm odds of advancing and then building like a gto uh optimal bracket for large field contests like i find that stuff to be pretty fun yeah yeah, that's true. I did, I built one too. I'm now I'm, this is all flooding back to me. I completely yeah. forgot about that. Yeah, you uh, did. I probably still have that somewhere. I think like that was that was probably two or three years ago, and now I I feel like this year I saw way more uh, of that kind of stuff and people starting to leverage the that public pick data a little bit more. Yeah, I bet there's more tools out there now. Uh, I bet some sites might even have it. I mean, you can because you can get pretty good ownership projections. Yeah. Just from the public available data. Well, if you think about it, right, it's like even for a DFS contest, um, you could, you know, you could have 100,000 entries. Like that's a pretty nice sample there. But I mean, millions of people, you know, put uh, brackets in here. Like the sample size you're getting there as far as a gauge for public sentiment is pretty damn good. Yeah. And they're updating it all the time. So, yeah. Yeah. It should, it should be fairly close to your home league with like your regional biases in there and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I have so many things these days that make me feel old, but one of them just being like, I, I was, I was trying to piece it out. And it was like from 1995, like when I was a kid and discovered March madness to 2005, like right through like my freshman year of college. Cause I remember my college buddies like weren't super into it. And I like showed them how to experience March Madness and got the brackets and it was like we'll order pizza and like ditch class right. and I'll post up at noon on Thursday and drink beers and all that. And uh for that period, like just it was always my favorite sporting event of the year. And uh and now I'll I'll, I'll be lucky if I catch a game or two this entire March Madness. Uh not me, Pete. My buddy's coming over here in a few hours. Are you? You're living and my tomorrow, dream. Yeah, tomorrow we're gonna get he's gonna stay over and tomorrow we're gonna get up. A couple other people are coming. You're having a be, sleepover? You're having a March Madness sleepover? Yep. <sighs> I'm so I'll jealous. be toasty tomorrow by 3 o'clock, if that. You're going to be firing off some uh, some bets here on the and old we're gonna, Yeah, fire off some bets that have no expected value whatsoever. Completely yeah. donkey bets. And then act like super fans at, you know, at the bar, even though we don't, we don't really care. <laughs> wow. Why didn't I get an in invite uh, for this? Well, you're a little far Lake away, but yeah. If you want, you're 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 welcome. I just figured kind of far away. You know what? This it this would have uh, yeah logistically it would have been bad. This is this is actually yeah. Lauren's on a work trip, so I am I'm holding down uh, the fort tonight with uh with with me in April. So that would have not worked out too well. No. I think if I brought a 15 month old to crash, 
uh, the March Madness sleepover. It might not have turned. Does she can, time. can she pick winners? Uh, she can't. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, then yeah. it's not going to help. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a good clarification, Brian. Will it be you or your interpreter making the bets? Uh, my interpreter will uh, be making the, the bets completely. Um, and if any of them were in my name, they were stolen. <laughs> drafting should be fun the losers because of this yeah there there was some um more Haralabob was talking about um problem gambling recently and i believe what it stemmed from was that did you see the post about the nba like within their app just their generic um NBA app for watching games was going to start showing gambling odds alongside of it. I believe that was the impetus for all of that. I'll pull this up. Was it? Cause I retweeted him when he first started and I don't remember if that was in there or not. Yeah. Cause I saw this tweet going around a bunch uh, from Joe pomp here. Uh, one of the pomp brothers, the NBA is adding live betting to NBA league pass. Viewers will be able to see betting lines on the screen in real time, select the bet they want to place and then be taken directly to FanDuel or DraftKings to place it. It feels like every league will do this in the future. Um, and there was a lot of dust up uh, about this, you know, bringing, betting even more to the forefront people you know i saw lots of comments about you know you're watching with your kids or your teenagers watching it here and this is how they're being introduced to gambling and it's creating a culture of being unable to watch and enjoy sports without gambling becoming uh, an appendage of that yeah well this is kind of what we always wanted uh gambling in <laughs> uh, intermixed with the broadcast i mean speaking of pat mayo we talked about it on his show and this show a bunch of times um, I think you can easily just put as, you know, the adult would be the owner of the account. And I'm assuming you should be able to have like an option of whether that wants to be shown or not. Yeah, I would um, hope so. I would hope so that that would be a toggle. Yeah. So, um, I, I mean, I don't see any, any big issue with it at all. The idea like of that, that Bob's kind of putting out there like that. I feel like it's kind of just like gambling's bad for society. Yeah. Which is f fine. Like that, I think that's a, that's a real, real, I mean, that's really why gambling has the negative, um, uh, you know, the negative uh, associations that it has is because it's been outlawed for so long in most jurisdictions in the country, because that's, they, you know, they, the traditionally they shared that kind of view. Um, and he goes, he goes on here when people quote tweet him and stuff ab about like his stance is really just, he thinks there should be no marketing or limited marketing. Yeah. And he said and somewhere so else too, credit cards should be illegal. And yeah. I think in England credit cards, I don't think you can use credit cards to gamble. Yeah. And I see some people say they don't advertise, but man, when I turn on a soccer mm -hmm. game, I see bet three, six, five everywhere. Oh yeah. So like they're definitely marketing in England and in England and many other countries have had gambling for a long time. Yeah. So like, why you, would America be any different? Did you see Strasser's, uh, comment? I thought his stuff, um, I thought he made some good points in his quote treat. Yeah, it did. Um, I'll read it real quick. He said, after seeing the absurdities of UAJA and the mess that followed, it's hard for me to root for lawmakers to make gambling harder. I support every law that makes gambling all, all, of all kinds easier. The more that people have to gamble in the shadows, the more bullshit that happens. It's better for everyone when it's all above board, regulated, and taxed, which sounds like a very familiar refrain you've made about sports betting uh, legislation before. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, as being right in that period that he's talking about, when poker got banned, it was a shit show. It was a real shit show afterwards. And why, one of the reasons I stopped entirely is just like, this is just, just not worth it. And before that, when they, they banned a lot of um, payment processors for sports betting was the first ban hammer in 2006. Then and that also became a shit show where you'd get ripped off much more easily uh, across the board. Yep. Yeah. 
He goes on to say, I personally don't mind people learning about gambling at a young age in a safe environment. You're going to grow up in a world with all sorts of legal and illegal temptations. Part of growing up is navigating this part of the world, understanding the pitfalls of gambling early in life makes sense to me. That being said, I am worried that not all parents are ready for the new realities of parenting. It extends beyond sports betting, crypto, options trading, stocks, all amplified by fake influencers on social media, glorifying all of it. Shout out Davis Maddock there. Um, and also glorifying making money. It's a new reality. Parents are aware of youth uh, drinking risks, for example, but many are not ready for watching for problem signs of gambling. I said, I talked about this a little bit on um, Neil. I did Neil's podcast yesterday. And the idea of like that people aren't aware of problem gambling. I know that's not specifically what he's saying here. He's saying the signs of problem gambling. I think like laughable, like definitely the vast majority of adults and young adults are aware of problem gambling. Give me a break. Like everyone knows what problem gambling is like, and, and there's 1-800-GAMBLER everywhere and hotlines and casinos and phones and yeah. legislation. And it's been illegal forever. Like people are afraid to bet some still, people are still afraid to bet even with an illegal environment. Like everyone fucking knows that. Yeah, I think it's, I think maybe what he, you know, if, if I were to agree with him, it would be along the lines of stuff, other types of addictive behavior or things that use would traditionally struggle with, say like drinking in drugs, like that has been so normalized as an issue. It's like parents are like, oh, my kid's doing drugs. I've heard about that from a million different people. I've seen it in TVs. I've read about it. I know this is a thing. And now it's hit my home where I think he's almost saying like, there are probably a lot of people who maybe aren't gamblers themselves who are like, holy shit, uh, my kid. And then if you also think about it from this, like these kids now all have these in-app games, which are essentially like soft versions of gambling. It's like, hey, get dad to give you five more of your Apple store credit so you can level up your badge in this game. And to where I wonder if in a weird way, it's like a parent who is more naive might not see or, or they'll be like, oh, that's just my kid playing with his app. I don't understand. He just needs a little bit money for this thing. I guess I do wonder if there is more. It's just less normalized because it's more new compared to drugs and alcohol, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, I think it's right up there with drugs and alcohol. I don't know but how we could think- like prove it. But I, I guess I mean from the just like cultural awareness for like the average parent of like, say you have a, a sixth grader right now. Like if you found out, like what would be like, what would I feel like, I guess what I'm trying to say is a parent would feel like they have more levers to pull or things they know they could do if they knew their kid was addicted to alcohol than if they were addicted to gambling. Hmm. I don't even know if I agree with that. <laughs> like, Get alcohol, alcohol is easier to do. I would say, like I think, I think as a parent, you could call DraftKings in FanDuel and be like, "Watch out for this kid. Here's his at- sure. IPs," and they'll be like, "Yes, sir. We're gonna look out yeah. for him." But like, you can't go to every liquor store and all stuff like that. And and bookies are like less and less frequently because it's legal now. Who needs them? Uh, right. So I think you probably could shut down your your kid from gambling pretty easily. And I think the vast majority of people know the, 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 the issue I have a lot of, I have a lot of issues with this, this, this stuff is just, it's having experience working at the Capitol. This is exactly a great issue for them to utilize because it's icky and no one wants to touch it. And they, and you don't want to be on my side or what, if you want to call it my side, um, because you seem not, you know, uh, compassionate. You seem, you know, yeah. you, you seem like a jerk. Like, hey, bad things are happening to good people. Don't yeah. you want to do something about it? And it's like, yeah, yeah every, everybody wants that. Every single person wants, you know, every single person wants, you know, to stop bad things from happening to good people. So, but, you know, you have to like clear, you know, do a throat clear like that before you go. But. Yeah. Don't you think that almost everyone's aware of this issue? It's obviously bad. It's commiserate based on the studies, which is my my point that I was making to Captain Jack on online, that the rates are about equal to uh, a ton of other addictions. 
the and I said this on Davis's podcast a while ago, like and this is the part where you'll call well you'll say it's you know you're not compassionate it's but it's like it's not as bad as crack <laughs> you know what i mean it, yeah. like people will do a lot worse things for crack and it, and i'm sure there's a small percentage of that small percentage of of addicted gamblers that will go out and rot you know stick up people and stuff like that yeah but the mostly what happens is like what happened to patel you lose a bunch of money and you get caught you know, you the, the thing that happens is you lose money. You usually don't like hurt your body or, or th- but like of course that does happen to a small percentage, and it's awful when it does happen to those yeah. people. But like I I feel like Bob and and Jack and Rufus and anybody else who's like a popular gambler would I think I I mean they could spend their time however they want. I'm I'm not protesting it. I'm just I just think it's it would be better to like protect gamblers. And spend yeah. our time actually protecting professionals and about these laws that hurt people and limiting and all sorts of things like that. There should be a concerted effort for that. And like this, uh, this other thing, the problem gambling, there is going to be a t- the the books want problem gambling to be a big issue. It helps them. Yeah. It helps them so they can mode off their competition through implementing more barriers of entry that upstarts can't pay for and showing legislators that they're the ones taking it serious and the upstarts aren't exactly right. Exactly. Which is why I think Jeremy uh, from underdog started that ID thing. Uh, I can't can't remember what it's called. I think that's exactly the play he's doing is yeah. We are a responsible gaming company. Look at the thing we started. It's a legislative play. Like he doesn't want your guys fucking limiting info. He doesn't. I don't think. I don't think he gives a shit about that. He's like thinking long term about how to get underdog in fifty states and with sports betting against these behemoths. So he's trying to like he's trying to flank them on the problem gambling issue. This is what I I have no back information on this. I'm totally speculating here. Yeah. But like that's like that. But it, I I think that goes along with this this type of thing is is the more like popular gamblers talk like this, that it's like, this will ruin the, the country when yeah. we already have 50, hundred years and multiple cultures of studies and legal gambling elsewhere that it didn't happen. And, and, you know, if you like, listen, if you want to get rid of marketing, fine, get rid of marketing. I don't care if you want to say no credit cards, fine. Get, you know, I have no power here anyways. I'm just saying like, uh, and and if you want to even get rid of sports betting entirely, like that's like a moral stance you can actually make, a claim you can make. Like maybe it is really bad for society. You know, I'm not even, I'm not even saying that. I'm, I'm just saying though, the the way the studies show, it seems like it's about even with a lot of things we do not give a shit about. Yeah, and it it also goes. There's the the larger thing of how like society processes these things. Like I feel like a good example is alcohol versus weed, where because so many people drink, so many parents drink that it's like, oh, drinking isn't that big of a deal. But weed, man, because I don't smoke, like that's the crazy one. Even though the studies are probably weed isn't as bad for you, it's less detrimental than alcohol and how it how many deaths it results in. But because of the stigma that it somehow that's why it's taken so long for it get to le- legalized everywhere is because of that public stigma around it i wonder like where do you think gambling falls within that just societal stigma spectrum that, that's what kind of like sets me off well for, first was like i the first thing i did was like well let's take five minutes and look at what the studies show and these yeah. studies aren't very political, right? Because they were done before it was even legal, you know? So, like, it's not like DraftKings sponsored it, you know, the study. Like, Gatorade sponsors a lot of their own study, you know, that type of thing. So, it has the stigma, just like you said. It's got the stigma side, but it's got the the problem side similar to, like, addictions of hobbies. Like, you mentioned, like, the video game ones. Like, how many yeah. guys have probably ruined their lives from spending money on the little, the little video games. Oh, there you go. Yeah, exactly. Like the, the video games where they, you know, you could spend like, you know, $15 every five minutes. I guarantee people have ruined their lives over that. Well, yeah, it's Mookie says the sports video games all have a pretty inherent gambling system in their games in that they get you addicted and then you want to be the best at it or you want to play the next level. And then that requires a pay to play option. And a lot of times you are going and asking your parents for their credit card uh, for this thing. And next thing you know, you've racked up all of these charges. 
What's and what's the difference? What's the difference if you spend your ten grand that you saved up on you know you know FIFA FIFA whatever ultimate team cards or yeah. um you know Lego a leg Lego shit you know or whatever hobby you're into or you know or ten grand on sports betting because you like what they would classify as as problem gambling would be something like that somebody saved up ten thousand dollars they spent it on sports gambling yep you know and then they can't pay their rent now it's like yeah. you could easily do that on tons of other things and they do like that it happens so I yeah. think it's closer to the I think it's like like closer to that side of the addiction realm because it's a spectrum right there's a big difference between a kleptomaniac and a person who's addicted to crack right but you just put it all under this umbrella of addiction and then it's like yeah. which is why these lawyers tell their clients to use the demon angle because it works and, and and gambling is right there so so the stigma is going to be used against us right and it's and it's not going to help i don't think it's going to help anyone i don't think they're going to use like they're going to be benevolent all, benevolent all of a sudden Right. Like what they would do is they'd lower the marketing. So like they would probably want to get rid of marketing because then that locks them in forever because yeah. then no one else can market and beat their beat their sharehold on the on, you know, on the market. It would be great for them. Yeah. Right. So like it's I don't think it's I think we would just be better spent advocating for players than participating in in the the like anti gambling problem gambling arena uh but, but again that's just my opinion and i don't care if you don't believe me you know, or if you don't want to financial advice not financial advice opinion. don't sue us don't dupe us for more incendiary takes uh become a davis matic take cast patron uh <laughs> an hour or two you can get the real uh unfiltered riot takes uh Copper in the chat, guy who works for one of my customers, has lost 38K this month at the local casino, been pulling it from his uh, 401K there. We also have Jal. Uh, is this broadcasting live from Japan? There are concerns that Otani will be made an accomplice and receive a lifetime ban for trying to help his translator. What is the coverage like in the USA? Uh, yeah, you can recap uh, or wind back. We went through what the most up-to-date reporting is. But I have a feeling, Brian, by the time we do this show next week, there will be a lot more uh, on the Otani story. Yeah, and I hope that doesn't happen, man. He's a great no. ball player. It's, it's so he's bat with a bookie. Who cares? I he's. I mean, as a casual, like as someone who doesn't follow baseball at all, like I think the Otani stuff, like just what he's done as a, as a dual player is like probably the coolest thing that's happened to the sport like since one of the like OG home run races between like Sosa oh, yeah. and McGuire. That was like the last time I cared about baseball. And like top, top five athlete all time. Like, I don't even know. It's like he's insane. up there. Can I just yeah. comment to, yeah. on copper that yeah, yeah. you highlighted there? I, again, too, I'm not denying the existence of problem gambling. It is real. It happens. My, my all state guy, it was uh, it, like ruined his life over problem gambling. And he knows what I do for a living. And he like talks to me. For hour, but like he just loves hearing about it because he he loves he still like loves the idea of wanting to gamble. So like it does happen. It's horrible when it happens. I'm just I mean I I, I you know I laid out all my my thoughts before, but just for the yeah. record, one last time, I don't want bad things to happen to good people. No, and and Copper's actually trying to deflect here. There are rumors in the Discord that he's out here uh, auto drafting the newest underdog tournament, rookies and sophomores tournament. Autoing that is just a true sign of um, a broken brain behavior. There, Copper. So uh, I'm not falling for this red herring you're trying to send us after. Um, you said you said something earlier, Pete, uh, about feeling old, and I and I wanted to get a comment in, and I didn't yeah. get it in. I just drafted Frank Gore Jr. And so, <laughs> like speaking of feeling oh, old, yeah, there when you, you when you draft, you know, Frank Gore Jr., who wasn't even that young. Like I wasn't even that young when he first yeah. started playing. Well, I guess, his he, dad was playing like, up until like two years ago. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah that that will make you that will make you start feeling old. Um, when we're drafting Marvin Harrison Jr. the third or something, you know. Yeah, uh, Marvin Harrison the third, not Jr. the third. And Frank uh, Frank Gore Jr. I believe that's a pretty big scroll down there for you too, right? A little scroll. A little well, scroll they had this, these twenty rounders, Pete. This twenty yeah. rounders, oh, too many I'm rounds. I'm aware. Um, all right, it's been a classic Lulz episode. 
find you a podcast that can start with Kate Middleton and finish with scrolling the F down for Frank Gore Jr. Hope your brass bracket isn't busted yet, bro. Uh, I wish I was going to get bombed and place uh, responsible bets like Brian is about to do so. We'll get the audio up. I see Neil. Neil, it's like I would call BS. Neil says I would smoke weed if I could get a Lulz bong. Um, hmm. I, I feel like that might be worth it from a content play. Uh, I do not believe my merch distributor makes bongs, but if I could get a Lulz decal slapped on a bong, ship it to Neil, and make him smoke weed for the first time on camera out of a Lulz bong, I think I could write that off as a business expense. I don't think you want to get go down the, the Cheech, Cheech and Chong uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, jail time here. That's what he got busted for. I, I, Pete's joking, just for the record. He's not going to do that. That lady from The Athletic or, or Reef, they're already thinking about uh, how the podcast playing for keeps only lasted six episodes. Neil Orfield found <laughs> downfall. <weed>. His <laughs> drug dealer, Peter Overset. Uh, all right. Uh, appreciate you guys. Enjoy your weekend. We're going to draft, I believe, over on Ship Chasing tonight if that's the kind of content you're looking for. Uh, otherwise, have a great uh, rest of your weekend, and we'll see you guys next time on Lowell's.